Hello, everybody, and welcome back to a very quick episode of Microsoft Flight Center. Well, it won't be quick, but today we are going to be talking about my track IR settings. Many of you have been asking for that, and after installing Windows 11, I have been put in a position where I am forced to redo my settings. So that's what we are going to work on today. All right, so first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open my open track software here. Make sure you have your centering button mapped. Let me get that microphone closer here. And we're gonna center our camera. And from here, this is where there's gonna be a lot of back and forth here. You can either create a new profile. Um, I always just use the default. You have to create a new profile with it stopped, but uh, I pretty much use the same profile settings for everything. So we're gonna go to mapping. You have yaw, pitch, roll, X, Y, and Z axis. X is going to be you physically moving your body from left to right. Y is going to be you physically moving your head up, down to your chest, and up, stretching your neck. Okay? And then Z, bashing your head into the yoke or slamming it back to the headrest. Okay? So we're going to actually start, though, with yaw. Okay? And what we can first do... Give me a second. I actually have to remember. It's been a minute. Uh, do, do, do. Haven't had to do this in a while, so bear with me for just a minute. There is a way to disable. There we go. Okay, so what we're going to do first is we're going to start with just pitch and uh, yaw. Okay, and then we'll bring everything else in because it can really mess up how you're perceiving everything. Let me get my foot off the rudder pedals. Okay, so first thing, checking my yaw. It's actually really good. I actually don't really have an issue with that. Okay. Now it does seem a little stagey, right? It's not very smooth. So let's start with the yaw. And actually, let's do this. If we're going to do it, let's uh, let's just disable pitch as well, because pitch is going to mess with things. So we're just messing with yaw. No matter what I do with my head, the camera will only go from left to right. Now what we're looking for is a smooth transition, okay? So let's go to our mappings. Now this is pretty dramatic. It really is. So I like to do um, asymmetric mappings, meaning that I have a mapping for turning left, and I have a mapping for turning right. Now what I'd like to do is extend these a little bit. By extending them, you're gonna get a bit more. So the the more I pull this slider out, the more movement that's required on my head. Like I am full all the way over. I'm sure you can hear it in the microphone. You know, I'm about tearing my head off and I'm not getting very far. Okay, that's because I'm very, very low. Even if I go real high, I'm gonna get a little further, but nothing crazy. Okay, so high is going to be how much rotation is the camera going to do. Left to right is how much rotation does your head have to do to reach the degrees that are listed here. So let's go ahead and we're going to, when I'm full over like this, I want to be able to, and actually make it a little bit more comfortable, right about here, I want to be able to be able to see behind me, right? So from this angle, I want to keep about this rotation. Notice that as I bring it, the slider to the left, I'm now turning further. I mean, and you could go like, if, if you're going to be looking at that back window here and you want it realistic, it, it should be pretty uncomfortable for you to, to hit that. Okay. So if I do something like that, and now if I go really far out, cool, I can see. But I mean, I can tell you right now, a big guy like me in a Cessna 152, I'm not going to be able to turn my head that far. Okay. All right. So let's do the same thing with the right. I'm going to go full right and then sort of start to realign. I'm going to draw it out a bit. Now from the right side, you'd be able to see out the back window a bit. But again, looking for that stretch point. I got to bring it a little forward. It was almost perfect right where it was. 
Okay. All right. So there. Let's bring it down just a hair. And then you can see that it's a bit smoother now. It's not quite as violent. But I'm gonna I'm still gonna take that right side and bring it up just a bit. It's a little weird because I'm literally looking out the corner of my eye to do it. All right. So now when we turn go full over and if you can if you see that the red dot passes the white dot well in that case let's bring the yellow uh, the white dot to the red that way you get that full range of motion in your head if that's what you're looking for and i do find that by doing that the longer you make these lengths of travel the more smooth the action is going to be okay so let's go ahead and hit okay here i'm good with that now let's go back to options here and we're going to check out pitch. We're going to do the same thing. All right. So now we're going to add the, the oh, not y'all. Sorry. Not, not the Y. We want pitch. So now we're going to be looking at up and down. All right. So let's get back in here again. Let's go to our mapping. And same thing. I like the asymmetric mapping. It looks like it did take some of my old settings, but some of them just seem wrong. All right. So going up here. closer I bring this the faster it's gonna be and you can go I mean you can get really crazy with this but see what's happening here and why it drops back down is the cameras losing focus of the LEDs so that's something you sort of have to deal with Oh, that sucks. <laughs> Let's hit cancel. I just realized I was on the yaw. I'm like, why is that not working right? It's just sitting here. There we go. Okay. So now, <laughs> let's go to pitch. And you can see I do have my curves. Okay, so it did pick up my curve, which is good. Now, with going up, it really depends on how high you want to go. Now, some of the aircraft, you know, like the TBM, you got to get your head up pretty high in order to see it and I mean whatever's comfortable for your head if you think you could stare at the top of the ceiling go ahead and set the camera there um, looking down and you can create multiple points by the way how you would do that is just simply left click so boom there's another point and this if you want it to for example you want it to be real smooth and uh, you know what? let me show you and you can right click them to get rid of them if we look at that notice that the action isn't very smooth anymore so what I've done here is you can take let's say you just want that first range of motion to be pretty smooth so let's put a dot right here okay and let's say we don't want it to go very far but then when we get really down into it we want it to get really far down so what the advantage of this is is if I just slightly put my head down nothing too crazy happens right I'm just looking at the dash picking my head back up looking dash but if I drop my uh, pen down on the floor for my kneeboard I can go extreme and that will increase as soon as I pass that point okay so for any reason you need to go really far down that's where that comes in handy but for those initial ranges of motion you can just sort of alright checking things out kinda of thing right nothing too crazy and this is how you get it nice and smooth same thing with going up if you're just wanting to you know add a at a light range here you know just some light head movement be able to move your head without you know keeping your head perfectly level and that's how you would do that and then if you need to go to the overhead panel you crank your head up and the camera will jolt up so it gives you different options on how you can do that all right roll this is one of those ones I don't really honestly like implementing okay but we can turn it back on and roll is literally going to be what it sounds like. You're rolling your head from, from the, your left shoulder to your right shoulder. Okay. And so let's go ahead and turn roll on. There we go. And you can see what I'm talking about here. So there's the roll. And roll, if anything, can make the camera do some really goofy things. So let's sort of adjust that. And actually, normally I leave it off. This is going to be another one of those ones where you want to pull it really far out. Otherwise, it gets really silly. Okay. 
Um, now, it does create a little bit more natural camera movement by allowing it some roll, but again, you want to be real cautious on how much you add into it because it can make it really odd. Okay, so we're just going to sort of leave it there. I don't want to play with the roll too much. You guys can feel free to experiment. It works the same way as any of the other axes do. Okay, now the next one, I'm probably swallowing the microphone at this point, is going to be, we're going to mess with our Z axis. This is a big one because when you want to zoom in and look at something. So we're going to put Z in here. Now, if I back up, I know I'm far away from the mic, guys, so I'm, and you probably can't hear me too well, um, or I'm sounding like a tin can, but I'm pushing myself all the way back against my chair. But then if I come forward, right, I'm in the face of the dash. So what we're going to do is we're going to sort of like decide how we want to do this. And one of the best ways to do that is your radio stack. So you're flying along, you're flying along, you're flying along, and then now you want to look at your transponder. Okay, so you can look down and pick your head in. Now the reason why we're like this, and it's not actually moving the camera, and so let's actually focus on the clock. We don't have the X and Y axis, that's why it didn't let me go over to the camera. We'll talk about that in a minute. So let's actually focus on the clock. I want to see what time it is, right? You can come in, boom, all right? And you can decide how violent that is. Um, now let's go to, not options, let's go back to our mapping. That's a little intense for me, honestly. So I'm gonna pull that out even further and reduce it. Darn it, did I do it again? You know what I messed with again? I messed with my damn yaw again. Or, I hate it when I do that. Or what are we on this time? I think we're on the roll. Roll's what we're on, so let's get to Z. Gosh darn it. Don't make the same mistakes I'm making, guys. All right, so this is our backwards, leaning out, and we're gonna reduce that quite a bit because rarely do I wanna zoom out. I do like to zoom in quite a bit, but this is pretty extreme. So let's pull this back just a bit and we can even stretch it out a little bit if we wanna go further, okay? And now you get a bit smoother of a transition, okay? And again, how smooth you want that to be or how high you want that to be, you guys decide what I like to do is Try to compare the movement of the camera to the movement of my head. Okay, if, if, if it's moving too far, well then it starts to feel unnatural. And as it starts to feel unnatural, that's when you're gonna start, your brain's gonna pick that up as you're flying and it's, it's gonna seem weird. Now, this is a real slap together. I'm just sort of tossing things together for you guys on this one, so it's not exactly the way I want it, but I wanted you guys to see the relationship. You know, the second the camera goes further than what my head does, you know, unless I really want that extreme, I mean, you can see how far you can go. We can really crank in here, okay? And the more you, the more natural you make it. And what you want is right here is where the seat stopped. You can tell. So I'm at the back of the seat. When I'm at the back of the seat, this red dot should be at the zero. So at that point, we want to sort of pull that out and extend it, okay? All right, there, so now we're starting to fall backwards, okay? And that's what we're looking for. So now in the rested position, you know, we should be right about there. All right, so now let's go ahead and close here and we're gonna look at mappings, or not at mappings, we're gonna take a look at our Y and Z axis, or Y and X. So let's go ahead and get Y enabled, okay? And it's going to be the same game. All right, so you can see we automatically jumped now that we've enabled it. This time I'm going to remember to click on it. All right, so Y axis, this is standing up, pulling my head way up. I'm stretching my neck, okay? And that's actually pretty good. Now when I relax back to my position, we're good there. Now if I want to go down, I do recommend adding a lot here. I'm actually going to leave this pretty much alone. Um, and the reason being is there's a lot of aircraft where you're looking down, especially if you're someone who's into DCS, um, where this comes in handy is like looking at the MPCD on the uh, F-18, you know, that center that center screen. Um, some of the lower switches and some of the aircraft can be a little bit of a pain in the butt to see, or you want to zoom down like on the uh, Cessna Citation Longitude, uh, you want to get down onto that uh, electric control panel, you know, this is where that comes in handy because it's so far down. So this one I'm going to leave alone, but again, the principle is the same, okay? So we're going to hit OK, and then the last one is going to be X. This is going to be being able to physically, yeah, see, move our head, 
from left to right. And we're all the way on the right side. I'm in Penelope's lap right now. We're going to recenter our camera. And let's see here. Now, when I go to look in, okay, so let's sit back up. I want to look at the transponder. Now, you can see it's a little weird. It totally is the way it's doing it. Um, and you can leave it like that if you choose. So here we go. You can see it's sort of goofy. And the other one's going to be the left side, okay? So, oh, we're on the wrong one again. Gosh, i got to stop doing that. Uh, we're still on an X. Something isn't right here. We're really not getting a lot of move, move, movement out of that, are we? There it goes. Now it's moving to the left. I see. I was all the way over on the left side. So let's go asymmetric. Okay. Now we're always flying from the right seat. On the left side, I mean, we're not really going to be sticking our head out the window. Let's grab that a little higher, I guess. But then you can see, yeah, you see how things get really wonky here. Okay, if you're not careful with that. So again, you want to pull this way down. Okay, and what I like to do is for those small movements, we're going to put a dot right here. And then after we leave that point, okay, so I got to make it pretty extreme. Okay, and then from here, we could go all the way over if we wanted. But in those dead zones, like here again, that's how you create a dead zone. You're going to create a dot and you're going to click all the way down to the bottom. I didn't mean to create that second one. Uh, let's see here. There we go. So let's go here. And then we're going to pull that down. So now we've got a range of motion where nothing happens. Okay. But if we really want to look into something, we can come all the way over. And that's too far. I don't want to be in Penelope's lap. So we're going to come back over here. And something like that. Okay. Now I'm not going to spend too much more time on this. There's a heck of a lot more that I need to do to fine tune this. But I know a lot of you guys have been asking me for this video, and that's the basic functionality of how OpenTrack works. And I highly recommend using OpenTrack. I find it to be significantly easier to use than Track IR's Natural Point uh, software. Um, this will work with a Track IR soft with a Track IR full Track IR configuration, meaning Natural Point's camera and headset, or, or LED track, however you want to do it. Um, so it's up to you guys to give that a shot. But I do recommend you guys at least try out OpenTrack. Um, and see if, if it's something that you would like. Um, there's no harm in it. You can have both installed. It, it doesn't care. Okay. I just don't have both running at the same time. Otherwise, you're going to be pulling your hair out. <clears throat> but anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope that was quick enough for you guys and that it uh, gave you the information you guys needed. I know, again, many of you have been asking me for this for quite a while. So uh, anyways, I hope you guys stay safe, stay healthy, and as always, see you in the next one.